once the red recording light appears, we will begin. Hello and welcome to the CDSE Cybersecurity Webinar. My name is Noah LeBaron and I am the Cybersecurity Curriculum Manager for CDSE and your host for this webinar. Our producer today is Rachel Mojo, an instructional designer with CDSE, and we are joined by our cybersecurity instructor, Ms. Rebecca Morgan. Today's topic is Cyber Insider Threat. Before we get started, Rachel will provide you with the ground rules for today's webinar and some instruction on how to use the tools you will need to participate. Okay, thank you, Noah. Before we get started, we're going to take a quick tour of this meeting room. In the bottom left-hand corner, as marked with the green arrow, you're going to find a notes box. This gives you the call-in number and any other announcements. If you are disconnected from audio, this number will always be here on the screen. Be aware that you are able to listen through your computer speakers today. Also on the screen, you'll see our notes regarding using full screen. If you look at the gray banner on top of your screen, you see a full screen option there. It's four arrows, and they make a square shape. You can select this button to have a larger view of the presentation. However, when questions appear, you need to select it again to return to the normal view and respond to our questions. Next, there is a Q&A box. You can enter questions to presenters in here. It's marked with a blue arrow. It's on the right-hand side of your screen. You're also going to find a file share box in the location indicated with a yellow arrow here. We have four files in the box today. You're, you're going to find the webinar slides in there. Feel free to download those, print them out, and take notes as we go. Here you're going to see an example of what a chat question response box looks like. We're going to be asking a couple chat questions today. Simply type your response into the chat box. The chat boxes are going to be floating right over on top of the question and answer boxes. And make sure you're out of full screen mode in order to respond. OK, this completes our tour of the meeting room. Back to you. Thanks, Rachel. As Noah said, my name is Rebecca Morgan. And Noah and I are delighted to have you all joining us for our very first cybersecurity webinar here at CDSE. Many of you may have tuned into CDSE's counterintelligence webinars on insider threat or potential espionage indicators earlier this year. And I think you'll find today's offerings a nice complement to those sessions. You can find these recordings in our webinar archives if you miss them. Today, we'll be focusing on the cyber insider threat, looking at the way in which traditional espionage indicators may manifest themselves in a cyber environment and new indicators specifically related to IT insider threat. We'll talk about some observable and reportable behaviors and activities associated with the cyber insider threat and identify best practices to prevent and detect this threat at your organization. Obviously, the technological revolution has changed everything about our lives, how we conduct business, travel, bank, date, even the way we spy. Although we are not talking about counterintelligence today per se, I think we'd be remiss not to take note of the way that traditional espionage indicators translate to the cyber environment. Espionage indicators, or really insider threat indicators, are sets of behaviors and activities that may indicate that an individual is engaging in espionage or another national security crime. All of these directly relate to the reportable behaviors and activities under DOD Directive 5240.06 and the NISPOM. As you learned in the CI Insider Threat webinar back in January, if any of these behaviors occur, they are reportable and will be pursued by the appropriate agency. However, it's important to consider how these may change in the cyber age. In our globalized economy, foreign contacts are more common. You may have international business partners, you might have studied abroad, or maybe even gone on an extended TDY. In the past, developed foreign contacts would have maybe resulted in a Christmas card exchanged once a year. Today, however, it's likely to result in Facebook, instant messaging, email, texting. How do you determine if someone has a close and continuing foreign contact? Most likely, these inter interactions will take place, at least in part, in a digital environment. Also, issues of loyalty or foreign preference will likely be noted in blogs, web posts, or social media. And not all, but certainly very many issues involving mishandling of classified information or security violations are going to revolve around information security systems. In the cyber age, some of these well-known indicators may even move to obsolescence. Why travel halfway around the world to meet your spy handler 
when you can transmit information by throwing it in Dropbox and get paid in Bitcoin. Knowing that this information, reportable behaviors and activities indicative of espionage and other national security crimes, is all housed in a digital environment, how does it change what will be reported and by whom? As a security officer or FSO or information system security manager, are you seeing regular reports that monitor anomalous behavior in automated information systems? What is your cybersecurity staff's level of expertise in identifying such behavior? These are all questions worth asking as you develop your insider threat and cybersecurity programs at your organizations. Another thing to consider is that insider threat involves more than just the spy. The term insider encompasses spies, saboteurs, thieves, and more. The U.S. Computer Emergency Response Team joined together with DOD's Personnel Security Research Center in the conduct of a study called Comparing Insider IT Sabotage and Espionage. And they determined that both categories are encompassed in the same threat base, differentiated only by the nature of the damage caused. The bottom line, IT insiders, by virtue of legitimate access to their organization's information systems and networks, pose a significant risk to organizations. For example, employees experiencing financial problems have found it easy to use the information systems they use at work every day to commit fraud. Other employees motivated by financial problems, greed, revenge, the desire to obtain a business advantage, or the wish to impress a new employer have stolen confidential data, proprietary information, or intellectual property. Employees have even used their technical abilities to sabotage their employer systems or networks in revenge for negative work-related events. Given the broad range of illicit activities associated with the insider, how would you define the cyber insider threat? Please enter your responses in the chat box. I see some good answers out there. Anyone? Anyone, it could be any one of us, unhappy employees. We're seeing disgruntled employees. Yeah, lots of good answers. And really the key to the definition is access, Rachel. The cyber insider threat has been defined as a current or former employee, contractor, vendor, or other business partner who has or had authorized access to an organization's network, system, or data and intentionally exceeded or misused that access in a manner that negatively affected the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of the organization's information or information systems. The IT insider threat is uniquely disturbing because cyberspace offers greater security to the perpetrator in cases involving insiders. Although audit or similar cybersecurity measures may flag illicit downloads or infiltrations, insiders may be able to mask their behavior it can also quickly transfer vast amounts of data, often causing damage before most organizations even detect a problem. That problem is exacerbated by our failure to detect malicious IT insiders. This was exhibited in that joint U.S. CERT DOD study, which revealed that in cases of insider IT sabotage and espionage, there were specific commonalities among the cyber insider threat and amongst the organizations victimized. The study found that most saboteurs and spies have common personal predispositions that contributed to their risk of committing malicious acts, and we'll discuss those in detail in a minute. Also, in most cases, stressful events, including organizational sanctions and unmet expectations in the workplace, things like reprimands or failure to get an expected promotion, raise, or level of access, contributed to the likelihood of insider IT sabotage and espionage. In most organizations, concerning behaviors were often observable before and during insider IT sabotage and espionage, but they were never acted upon. Technical actions such as the download and use of hacking tools, failure to document activities, unauthorized access, and the setup and use of backdoor accounts by insiders could have alerted the organization to planned or ongoing malicious attacks. Many organizations ignored or failed to detect rule violations, and those were just the facilities that had rules in place. In many instances, there was a complete lack of physical and electronic access controls to begin with. So I said we would talk about the personal predispositions noted in the study, and they tended to fall into these categories. Serious mental health disorders included alcohol and drug addictions, 
a history of physical spousal abuse, panic attacks, and diagnosed mental health issues. Personality problems included insecurity, bullying, sensitivity to criticism, a sense of entitlement, impulse control, and self-esteem deficits. Social skill and decision-making deficits were identified as conflicts with coworkers, hygiene problems, extreme shyness, and bullying. Finally, a history of rule violations was apparent in many of these cases and included not just IT-related offenses such as hacking, but also petty theft, misuse of resources, falsifying of information, and other violations of office policies. So I just spent all this time describing the characteristics of the IT insider threat when maybe I should have just referred you back to the character of Milton from Office Space. I don't know how many of you saw or remember that movie. I know Noah and Rachel have seen it. But Milton was a supremely nerdy coworker who exhibited every trait we just discussed and was subject to all sorts of perceived or real sanctions and unmet expectations in the workplace. These including moving his office to the basement, missing paychecks, he was the one guy not to get cake at the office birthday party, and, unforgivably, they stole his swing line stapler. And in the end, he turns out to be quite the insider threat, blowing up the office building. But based on everything we've just discussed, the described traits of cyber insider threat, including the noted personal predispositions, which character is more cause for concern? Would it be Milton, the socially awkward classic nerd, or Peter, the clean-cut, well-liked around the office, classic cool guy? Put your responses in the chat box. Oh, I see a lot of people saying Milton, a few votes for Peter, and a number of you coming up with the answer that is both. Looks like a lot of people do remember this movie, and I see you've all picked up on that true idea, which is, of course, that relying on a profile that all IT insiders are going to look like your classic geek with tape on the glasses and pocket protectors is false. The fact is, both men are a threat. In the movie, Milton may blow up the building, but Peter first used a simple algorithm to rob the company blind. Although every office has a guy like Milton, someone everybody may make fun of or even feel sorry for, and I noticed Rachel making a sad face when I was describing the hygiene issues of our poor guy, every office also has a guy like Peter, who actually was exhibiting some of the behaviors as well. He had conflicts with coworkers, however deserving those coworkers may have been. He might have also had a sense of entitlement and maybe some impulse control issues as well. And you may be thinking, isn't all this stuff screened out during the hiring process? While some of these issues may become apparent during a suitability or security investigation, many won't. And you can't deny a clearance just because somebody has BO. And also, many of these will not become apparent at all until you've worked with someone for a while. Nor is this to say that every insider threat can be reduced to these caricatures, the nerd or the flippant, too cool for school guy. Truthfully, anyone with authorized access to your IT systems may pose a threat. As such, we cannot rely on a profile, but need to look at specific behaviors and activities of individuals to help us detect and deter malicious insiders. So we know that the key to effective detection of cyber insider threat is paying attention to behaviors and activities, but what kind of things are we talking about? In addition to the traditional espionage indicators that we mentioned at the top of the webinar, which are explored more fully in our counterintelligence offerings, there are information technology specific indicators that have been identified in cases of cyber, insider espionage, and sabotage. In the espionage cases, they involved a variety of rule violations and harmful technical actions, including download and use of illicit software or malware, violations of acceptable use policy, and illicit access. Many of these indicators can be detected through a combination of technical countermeasures and auditing, and all of these act actions should be reported, things like illicit use of IT tools, violations of policy, and attempts to hide online activity. Ask yourself, are these activities subject to monitoring at your organization? If so, who does the monitoring, and where is it reported? Many of the indicators in the sabotage cases were similar and illustrate the range of behaviors and activities that should be considered anomalous. Again, policy violations, unauthorized deployment of hardware, software, and other IT tools, concealment strategies. 
Many people think of the misuse of IT systems as sending rescue emails or visiting inappropriate websites. And while these activities do pose a problem, we're equally, if not more, concerned with network probing, creation of backdoor accounts, installation of unauthorized hardware, and the other items identified here. Consider not just the illicit technical activities, but policy violations, such as using coworkers' machines and access codes, failure or refusal to document systems or software, and the retention of company property after termination. These behaviors are all considered reportable activity under DOD Directive 5240.6 in Closure 3, which is attached in the file share box below. They could also be reported as adverse information regarding a cleared contractor under the NISPOM Chapter 1, 302A. Illicit cyber activity is a crime like any other, and the elements of any criminal activity naturally involve the following factors. Opportunity, which in the case of cyber insider threat comes in the form of access to information systems. Motives, and really there are as many motives as there are people. 15 minutes of fame, ego, new job, anger, divided loyalty, fear of failure, financial problems, ideology, emotional needs. And these are really the same things that motivate any of us to do any number of things. Most people who need money don't spy. They get a second job. Most people disgruntled at work don't commit sabotage. They go back to school or look for a new position. People with emotional needs may get married or get divorced or whatever might solve that particular problem. No, the real factor when it comes to those who commit illicit IT insider events is the lack of inhibition to betray, which may be caused by conflicting loyalty or organizational issues, but often hinges on personality problems, excessive ego, grandiosity, and risk-taking personalities, for example. All of these factors are accompanied by some sort of final trigger, often caused by stress related to drug or alcohol abuse, rejection, unmet expectations in the workplace, family problems, or other real or perceived crises by the insider. When considering whether an individual represents a cyber insider threat, remember that indicators don't exist in a vacuum and are likely to be accompanied by observable and reportable behaviors related to these elements as well. Now, we've spent a fair amount of time discussing the malicious insider, but I think it's also important that we document the risks associated with unwitting or careless insiders. Damage caused by these individuals relating to unlawful disclosure and the integrity, authenticity, and availability of information systems and data can be just as harmful to your organization. In fact, a 2005 FBI study indicated that these individuals were responsible for nearly as many attacks as external perpetrators. Unwitting insiders could include individuals who wittingly or unwittingly provide sensitive information or succumb to social engineering, elicitation, or other methodologies in the digital realm. There are also risks associated with policy violators, including those who make unauthorized backups of data to work from home. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the issue that arose at the Veterans Administration a few years back. The agency was suffering under an extreme backlog, and in a misguided effort to alleviate the workload, an employee took home a laptop without authorization. The laptop was subsequently stolen, leading to the compromise of personally identifiable, identifiable information of 26.5 million veterans and active duty personnel. Yikes, right? I mean, I imagine some of our listeners today may have been among those affected by this disclosure. Also, don't forget that issues such as accidental deletion or modification of data can pose information system security problems as well. All right, it's time for another chat question. You guys seem like pretty savvy cyber awareness folks, and given the issues that we've discussed, and despite what I know are your aggressive efforts in cybersecurity training and awareness in your own agencies and organizations, let's just say an employee reports that they downloaded an attachment to an email, which they now suspect may have been malicious. How are you going to respond to that employee? Let's see some answers in the chat box. I see reported immediately, disconnecting from the network or the computer, talking to the security officer, quite a variety of answers actually a lot of good ideas out there. And a lot of you probably have these practices in place right now. 
However, one of the things I'd like to point out is that the same issues that make an insider a threat also make them an asset. Your system users sit right with your greatest vulnerabilities, and as the target of external threats are really your first line of defense for detecting and deterring illicit cyber activity. Encouraging these users to report cyber threat information, as well as their own inadvertent policy violations, are critical to effective cybersecurity. Early detection of malware, suspicious network activity, and the like is essential. It can make the difference between a solvable problem and an information security nightmare. As such, it's important to consider your response when users report violations. And I did see a lot of good responses out there. Just remember, though, if you fly off the handle or impose harsh sanctions when an individual tells you about an attachment that they downloaded without authorization, you can bet they're definitely not going to tell you about the other time when they shared their password. Measure your response to the situation. Remind your users that early reporting is critical and that information security is the primary goal, not punishment. All right, we've covered a lot of information regarding cyber insider threat, discussing espionage indicators in a digital environment, personality traits, specific technical and behavioral indicators of the cyber insider threat, as well as motives and triggers. It's all good stuff, but it's sometimes hard to know how to incorporate that into a successful cybersecurity program at your organization. As we discussed, many of the potential indicators of cyber insider threat, both technical and behavioral, are observable and reportable. Addressing these issues within your cybersecurity awareness and training can increase your ability to detect and deter the cyber insider threat. In addition, having well-planned incident response will not only enhance your capability to handle current issues, but encourage an open-door policy where employees are likely to report a variety of cybersecurity threats and vulnerabilities to you. I also find that operational exercises are an extremely effective training tool. I'm not sure if any of you heard of this a few years ago, but the Department of Homeland Security took a number of thumb drives and CDs, scuffed them up a little bit, and threw them into the parking lot of a couple of federal agencies in the DC metro area. Of those items that were thrown around the parking lot, over 90% were retrieved by federal employees, and of the retrieved items, 60% were immediately deployed onto federal computer workstations. Not brought to the IT desk, not brought to the FSO, but put directly into the systems. Now this was an operational exercise, and the materials were provided by DHS. It amounted to basically a gotcha for those individuals. But if that's any indi indication of how individuals behave with this type of material, it shows that we've got a big problem on their hands. Employing an exercise like this is far more effective than just giving a briefing or maybe doing a point-and-click type of presentation. Not that this will prevent everyone from engaging in this behavior, but I guarantee the folks involved, and probably the coworkers as well, of those individuals that deployed the DHS memory sticks will never do it again. There are some other factors that can enhance your ability to prevent and detect cyber insider threats. When establishing best practices, it's important to consider a multi-layered, multi-disciplined approach. In addition to following information assurance guidelines and employing technical measures designed to protect information systems, consider the roles of personnel security, helpful perhaps in identifying some of the personnel issues which may contribute to cyber insider threat, physical security which can impact access and other factors, as well as industrial security, foreign ownership control and influence issues, supply chain risk mitigation, operation security, and continuity of operations planning. It's only by incorporating each of these security disciplines and through the application of a defense in-depth approach that we can begin to mitigate our risk by limiting access, increasing reporting and detection, honing our responses, and employing effective deterrence. Please see the cybersecurity and best practice documents identified in the file share box below for more information on the prevention and detection of cyber insider threats. As we discussed, illicit cyber incidents, both external and insider-based, are reportable under DOD Directive 5240.6 in Closure 3. A copy of the directive is located in the file share box. Insider cyber incidents are also subject to reporting under the National Industrial Security Program under NISPOM Chapter 1301 and 1302A. Cyber insider threats have become increasingly sophisticated 
And the harm they inflict causes more damage to our economy, our companies, and our nation than most external threats combined. Please remember, you truly are our first line of defense in an effort to detect, deter, and defeat the cyber insider threat. No one sits closer to our most critical assets or better understands our vulnerabilities than you. And in the case of the cyber insider, no one else may be closer to our greatest threat, a threat that could linger just across the conference table or down the hall. I'm looking at you, Rachel. No. She doesn't exhibit any of the behaviors, folks, but anybody could. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to our first cybersecurity webinar series. We hope you'll join us for our next presentation on Trusted Download coming out this summer. I'll pass it back to our curriculum manager, Noah LeBaron. Thank you, Rebecca, for that amazing presentation. Let's look at some of the questions that came in during the webinar. First question, who is required to have a program for cyber insider threat? For federal agencies, White House Memorandum dated 11-27-2012, Handling Guidance for the National Insider Threat Policy and Minimum Standards under Executive Order 13587, requires the establishment of an insider threat program. Next question, what exactly is the requirement for industry? At this time, there is no NISP requirement for industry to establish an insider threat program. However, conforming change to the NISP bomb expected in FY15 will likely have an insider threat program requirements. Next question, can you provide examples of reportable CI events? In addition to the items mentioned in the webinar slides, please refer to DOD Directive 5240.06 included as a downloadable file in this webinar. Last question, which industry best practices or strategies can lower level information assurance practitioners use to best mitigate this threat? Following the best practices suggested in our downloadable handouts and employing a multidisciplinary approach can be very effective in detecting, deterring, and neutralizing the cyber insider threat. Anyway, we have run out of time to re answer remaining questions. However, we will answer those questions offline and be sure to post responses along with the transcript from today's webinar. Your feedback on today's webinar is very important to us and is greatly appreciated. So I hope you will take a moment to participate in the short survey. And since we are always looking for ideas for future webinar topics, if there's a topic you would like to see, make sure to identify that topic or topics in your survey. The survey may now be visible on your screen or it may appear as a new tab on your web browser. Thanks to everyone for joining us today. As Rebecca mentioned at the start of our webinar, our previous Insider Threat and PEI webinars also provide relevant training. We've provided the links to these webinars here. Also, please be sure to visit the CDSE Cybersecurity webpage and check out some of our exciting offerings, including e-learning, instructor-led courses, and shorts. For Rebecca Morgan, Rachel Mojo, and all of CDSE, this is Noah LeBaron saying thanks for spending your time with us today. Have a great day.